All right, welcome back to the mass concepts. So what we're looking at today is um, question question nine, uh, which is the geometry section and tricks of CXC January 2023. Uh, so here it is. We have a circle theorem question to start it off. And it, it reads as follows. It says, um, WX, and you are points on the circumference of a circle. We're seeing them here, here, and there. So they are points of the circumference of the circle. All right, so it is saying that uh, TV is a tangent to the circle at U. So we're looking at TV, which is um, that line, the tangent line down here, right, right there, that's TV. And it is, they're saying it's a tangent to the circle at U. So I use a point of tangency. Um, UW is a diameter. So we're getting this that this WU or UW is a diameter of the circle. And you could see that this is the center right there. All right. Um, also, as we go further, we're told that WXU is an isosceles triangle. All right. All right. So there we go. We have some information. So the, 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 the question says that using, so I'm looking at the question at the bottom, using appropriate theorems, state three reasons that explains why the measure of angle Z is 45 degrees. All right. So they want to know why angle Z is 45. Why is this angle here 45? What we want to do, we could quickly fill out. Um, we could quickly fill out this diagram, decorate it. For example, um, since WU is is WU, this line here, since that's a diameter, uh, it makes this angle in a semicircle to be ninety degrees. All right, so we're getting a ninety degree right there. All right, so this is a ninety degree right here. And then since WX and UX, they are the same because it's an isosceles triangle, then if I should take that 90 from 180 and split it into two, I'll get 45 for both. All right. So that means this angle here is 45 degrees and this angle here is 45 degrees. So know that I've decorated this diagram. I am now able to give three reasons why this angle right here is 45. So firstly, I just went ahead and I typed out some reasons. One, we're looking, so reason one, we're looking at the fact that W is a diameter. Therefore, the angle X that we know there was a 90 degrees. And because of that angle in a semicircle, we were able to navigate further because if we never had this, we wouldn't have known what these are, all right? And those are the clues that are linking forward. So one of the first, first reason that I'm seeing here is to understand that this is a 90 degree, which would have forced me now to be able to split these up into two equal 45, right? So that's one of the reasons why this is going to be 45, all right? Another reason is, is the fact that the triangle WXU is an isosceles triangle. So knowing that it's an isosceles triangle, I was able to find the 45 degrees and to understand that, that it had to be shared equally for these two angles that we're looking at there, right? So the isosceles triangle would have given the clue that, listen, this is 45, that means this is 45 as well. So the, that's another um, reason why this angle out here will be 45. And there are a lot of reasons. And then you could look at the fact that there is the angle between the angle between a tangent and a chord. So we're looking at this angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So let us directly look at that. The angle between a tangent and a chord, I'm going to put it in green right here chord and a tangent right here, this angle, which is angle Z, that angle 
is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So it's going to be equal to this angle in the alternate segment as well. And remember that we said that this was 45. So we could see that that's a direct relationship there. Another thing, again, it's giving us many reasons, all right? Another reason that we could look at is the fact that a diameter or a radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees, right? And then now, having known that part of it was already 45, if I take 45 from the 90, I'll get angle Z again to be 45 degrees. So another reason could be the angle between a tangent and a diameter is 90 degrees, and we would have utilized that knowledge in order to work out the angle here to be 45 again. So there are a number of reasons that we could have used, but they only ask for three. So any one of those three would have been the, the, the reasons why that angle has to be 45. All right. The diagram below, shows a circle with diameter um, F, KF, line E, FG is a tangent to the circle at F, and the points F, H, K, and J lie on the circumference of the circle. So we are seeing all of that that we need there. So the question says, the question says here, right? The question says, um, Show, all right, by showing each step in your work where appropriate, find the value of the angle X and Y. All right, the angle X, uh, there may not be any working for angle X, all right, because angle X can be easily found by looking at angles in the same segment. So let me show you um, what we're talking about. We're talking about looking at the point at F and and H, uh, let me color code the this. So we could we could look at the arc from F to H, this arc right here, the arc from F to H, right there. So you're noticing that these two angles at J and K, where they came from, they're standing on F and H, so they're standing at the same arc, or you could look at the fact that the same chord, anyone you want to look at, right? So watch this. So you could see then, let's go there. You went 2F to J, that's the J right there. Yeah. And then we actually have the angle developing at F to K, H to K. So they are in the same segment because I'm going to shade one segment. So one segment, I'm going to put it in blue. Watch. This is one segment of the circle here. So this segment was created down here. And when we're talking about the, the same segment, we're talking about 56 and X. They're touching the circumference on the other side, in the other segment of the circle. So they are both the same. All right? So we could um, take off this. So we could see that 56 56, right? X. X is equal to 56 degrees. And we're looking at the fact that um, they did say give reasons. No, just working. All right, there's no working out for that. So it's the same segment. All right. Now let's look at Y. Now, if you want to find Y, Angle Y can be determined like about three or three ways. I could say I'm seeing three ways. I'm gonna pick a one. I'm could I could use the same segment with 90 because consider this this arc right here. Look at going to F, right? So and then look at this going to H. So the angle 19 is in the same segment here as that, right? So that's 19 as well, right? So let us take off our those. So 19, same segment. This is 19. Now, I want to go to Y, but I'm focusing on this triangle, here, right? So if I focus on this triangle, if I could find this angle here, then I'll use a straight angle to go across to the Y. 
So at first, I'm going to find this angle. So it's going to be 180 degrees minus the sum of the 56 plus the 19, right? So um, 56 to 180, 56 plus 19 will give us about 75. So 180 minus 75, right? And that's going to give us 105. That's not the answer. 105 is this angle that I'm about to put on right here. 105. So this is 105 right here. Which means then, since this is a straight angle right here, I'm able now to find y by simply taking that 105 from 180 degrees, and definitely y is 75 degrees right here. And that's just one of the many ways that we could have gotten those responses. So y is 75 degrees right right there all right now let's look at this other question so it says um so this is c it says the diagram blue shows four points p q r and s on level ground all right so bear in mind that they are on level ground p q r and s they are on level ground all right where pillars will be placed to mark the outline for a foundation all right fine let's see what else the, the question says that's it so we're looking at this question here it says there is a vertical post rt at r right so there's a vertical post rt at r so if you go at r so for example let us say uh, this is Q. Told is of, so this is R. Yeah. Vertical and horizontal, we give a 90. T is up here. So we have T up there, right there. So we're saying that, um, so they're saying there's a vertical post at, at R. Right? R. R T is that vertical post. Now we're told that the angle of elevation to the post T from Q is 21. So, so we're making this link. Let me just drop it. So we're talking about moving from Q to here. So we're told that that's 21 right here. This angle is 21 degrees. So the angle of elevation. So now they're creating this for us. All right. They are creating that for us, but QR is 153 meters, all right? So let's see what they want. Find the height of the post. So you want to find the height of the post. In other words, you want to find RT, right? So RT is, as you could see, it's opposite, all right, to the angle, and then we have the adjacent to the angle, all right? So go on our trig ratios. We're going to be using tangent. So we're going to say a tangent of 21 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is RT over the adjacent side, which is 153. Well, we multiply both sides by 153. And then we would have found that. So we're talking about 153 tangent of 21. And I'm getting 58.7. All right. So that is an approximate value for RT. All right. So RT is 57, 58.7 meters. All right. So we have that. So it says now, so the question is saying that given, given that the length, all right, so given that the length QS is 135 meters, calculate the perimeter. All right, so let us look again. Given that the length QS. So now they're giving us from Q to to s so this is one 
135 meters. They want us to calculate the perimeter. The perimeter is the distance along the boundary. We're adding up all of these distances. Going around, going along the boundary there. So we're cutting out that. But we do notice that we have this, which is that 153. We have the 110. We have the 83. But we're missing. We're missing this side here. All right. So PS is missing. But what we're going to be doing here, as you can see, we're going to focus on this triangle, right? So we're going to focus on this triangle I'm going to highlight here. In red, we're going to focus on this triangle. So if we focus on that triangle, right, we have an angle between two known sides to find the side which is opposite, right, to that. Again, we have an angle between two known sides, and we're finding the side across from the angle. So we're going to be using the cosine rule right there to help us out to get that side, and then we could put everything together. Let us now put the working, set the working out. So we're talking about um, P, P, S squared, all right? PS square is equal to 83 square plus 135 square minus 2 times 83 times 135. This must be multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which is 29 degrees. So this is where we're putting down the work. Main thing is try not to make any errors. So we have 83 square. And that's um, 6889, 135 square, 18225. And so when you put all of this on your calculator one time, yeah, negative 2 times 83 times 130. Five times the cost of 29, we're going to get minus 19,600 point two. All right. Let's put everything together. 6889 plus 18225 minus 19,600.2. All right. So PS square is giving us. 5,530.8. We're going to take the square root, all right? So PS is equal to square root of 5513, 1.8, yeah? And then we're getting 74 point, about 3 meters, right? Now, the perimeter of the figure now is to put together all of these measurements, the 70. 4.3 plus, adding up all of those, 153 plus the 83, and I think it's 110, yeah, plus 110. We're putting together all of that, 74.3 plus the 153 plus the 83 plus 110. And the perimeter is 420.3 meters. Normally what I do, I look to see if there are any specific instructions as it relates to, uh, you know. All right, so basically that's it. That's it. So we were saying this was a 74.3. All right. Thank you very much for watching Daily Mass Concepts and um, definitely uh, see you next time. Look out for question 10.